Hey friends, guess what? We have the cutest little frogs all over the place outside here at the library. Uh, Miss Patrice has been seeing them outside the, in the garden and in the greenhouse for a while. A patron had one startle her when she was looking at one of our tree identifier signs. Um, we got a picture of one visiting Miss Abby the other day. And so I thought, let's talk about frogs and what frogs eat. Frogs eat a variety of things that can be found in the air and in the ground. So they like bugs, they like worms, they like slugs, they like a lot of things that you and I would definitely not want to eat. But we are gonna make an edible, that means we can eat it, version of what they like to eat. We are gonna make dirt cups with little candy bugs and worms. Now, this is a classic. You may have had it before, and if you haven't, then you're in for a treat. To make dirt cups, you need some pudding mix, Oreos, you do not need the whole container, and you need milk, and you need something to decorate with. And our friends at Whole Foods donated this milk and these adorable little fruit snack bugs for us to make our dirt cups today. For equipment, you're gonna need a mixing bowl, a whisk, a measuring cup, and then I recommend a Ziploc bag and a rolling pin to make cookie crumbs. So to make my cookie crumbs, I have put 12 sandwich cookies into my Ziploc bag, and now I am going to break them up with a rolling pin. I'm gonna put pudding mix in the bowl. Two cups of cold milk. Thanks again, Whole Foods. And now the directions say I've got to whisk this for two minutes. Okay, see how it's getting thicker? Two minutes is almost up. It's been a good arm workout. Time to put them together. I've got my decorations laid out, ready to go. I've got the cute little bugs, candy bugs, and I've also got some candies that I'm going to use like worms or caterpillars, different grubby things that you find when you're digging in the dirt. I've got my cookie crumbs, and I have my pudding. So, time to put it all together. I'm gonna take a spoon like this. This is called a ladle. You don't have to use the ladle, but get you a spoon. And we're gonna put in our pudding. A layer of pudding anyways. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a layer of my dirt crumbs. See how you can see it through the side? And I think this is a great place for a worm. even a bug. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna put some more pudding on top of that. Ooh. There will be surprises when a person goes to eat this. Now the top needs plenty of dirt. It's not real dirt, of course, cookie crumbs. Then I'm gonna decorate the top. Our little bugs with some worms. We have things that fly through the air and land. You can do it however you want with whatever you've got. But I think they are too fun. And I'm gonna tell you what, they are delicious too. Our story today is Bradley McGog, The Very Fine Frog by Tim Beiser, published by Tundra Books. Bradley McGog was a very fine frog who happily napped in a hollowed out log. This log in a bog where our frog spent his days was a pad Brad had had since his pollywog phase. Oh, beautiful bog, croaked McGog. What an Eden. You're filled to the gills with good frog things to feed on. Said Bradley McGog on one hot summer day, I'm needing a feeding. I'm wasting away. So up in his cupboard, Brad grabbed for some luncheon. But what a surprise. He found nothing to munch on. There's nothing to eat here exclaimed the poor frog. What happened to all of the food in my log? Brad sat on a stump and he pondered and pondered. He strained his frog brain, but his mind kind of wandered. Pretty soon, around noon, Bradley had a clear vision. He knew what to do. He had made a decision. My gosh, I'm a with new neighbors to meet. My task is to ask them to share what they eat. Hop, hop. His first stop was to visit Miss Mouse in the underhill nest that she used for a house. Miss Mousy, he said, may I trouble to borrow some grubs for my supper? I'll pay you tomorrow. She squeaked very meekly, come in if you please, and made him a snack of rye crackers and cheese. With his tiny green fingers, he stifled a gasp in fright at the sight of the cheese in her grasp. Cheddar with chives and a peppercorn dusting, he had never seen anything quite so disgusting. Said the frog to the mouse, who insisted he try it. Drat the lot, I forgot. I just started a diet. Hop, hop, his next stop was to call on the bear who lived in a den that he shared with a hare. Hare bear and hare hare, I arrive half alive and ask for a sweet, buzzy snack from your hive. At a spot near their grotto, the bear and the bunny presented brad carrots all covered in honey. Ew, what is that? Such horrible stew, orange colored roots that are sticky with goo. That was his thought. He of course didn't share it. So as not to be rude, Bradley reached for one carrot. What a treat, said the frog. Home it goes in my bucket. Instead, Bradley fled to a mole hole to chuck it. Hop, hop. His next stop was the cow on the slope whose mooing and chewing gave Bradley great hope. But he stopped in mid-hop when he caught Miss Moo grazing. 
What she chewed for her food, Bradley found quite amazing. She was munching on clover and snacking on grass. To avoid the same lunch, Bradley gave her a pass. So sadly did Bradley slog back to his bog to mope without hope for some food in his log. But when he got home, Bradley croaked with elation. His hall was a crawl with a pest infestation. Mmm, bugs are tasty. Mmm, bugs delicious. Bugs are a bog frog's most favorite dishes. He sat down to dinner and feasted on pails of maggots, mosquitoes, grasshoppers, and snails. He gobbled up stink bugs and sweet buzzy bees, flies, squirmy worms, crunchy roaches, and fleas. Brad said as he fed on some dragonfly wings, holy smokes, other folks eat some pretty strange things. <laughs> the end. Isn't that a cute one? I like it because I like the saying to each his own. And that just means not everybody likes the same thing to eat. Not everybody likes the same thing to wear. And that's okay. I like how Bradley McGog never was rude to anybody because they offered him something that he thought was gross. He didn't say, ooh, you eat that, you're nasty. So, on the nonfiction front, I have a recommendation, Frogs by Gail Gibbons. And of course, this is a very inclusive, got all sorts of information about the life cycle of a frog, and it has great illustrations. But if you want something that's maybe got a little less information, I recommend From Tadpole to Frog. So it's just about the life cycle, and it has photographs, and just not quite so much text. It's just a little, it's a shorter book, but it's a good one. All right, that's all the time I have for today, so I will see you next time.